What I'm going to share with you today is going to make great changes. You're going to gain a lot of education above and beyond what our topic is going to be. The topic is vitamin E and atherosclerosis beyond prevention of LDL oxidation. LDL meaning low density lipoproteins. That's our bad cholesterol. And I'll be talking about that in just a few minutes. But we have to understand that from poor diet, obesity, diabetes, all these contribute to metabolic syndrome that eventually causes atherosclerosis. And atherosclerosis is hardening of the arteries, placking within the arteries that prevents blood to get to those cells. If it's your heart, if it's your brain, if it's your lungs, if it's in your legs, if it's in your arms, remember that oxygen must get to the cells in order for your cells of your body to be healthy. If it's heart cells, brain cells, or any other cells. We can fight atherosclerosis. We can actually prevent and reverse to a certain degree atherosclerosis. There's no question. And I will share this study with you, but I want you to understand more about what we've heard in the past, what we call cholesterol. Cholesterol, the two kinds that we're commonly that we commonly hear is LDLs and HDLs, low density lipoproteins and high density lipoproteins. The so low density lipoproteins are our bad cholesterol. But hold on a second. If you have a high amount of LDLs that's shown on your cholesterol panel, you must look for two things. Is it the large and fluffy particle or the small and dense particle? The large and fluffy particles, I want you to imagine this, that you're standing up and all of a sudden a big beach ball, you're on the beach, and a big beach ball come and hits, hits you right on the head. Is it going to hurt you? No. It's large and fluffy. But imagine something that's small and dense, like a golf ball. Small, but dense. And if, that, if that's thrown at you or hits you in the head, it's going to be very dangerous. That's how you can know the difference. So it's a small, dense particles of the LDL. That's important to understand because even though your LDLs are higher in many situations, you can still be extremely healthy as long as you have more of the large and fluffy particles of those LDLs. So let me just first tell you the importance of why we need cholesterol, because cholesterol used to be the big thing that, uh, you know, high cholesterol, got to go on statins. I just want you to know back in the 80s, uh, the numbers were th way, way up there, like 300 and something, and it was normal until, unfortunately, the pharmaceutical market wanted to get a grasp on things and saying that if it goes over 200, uh, that right away we got to go on statins. But many times your doctors don't even check for the small and large particles of those LDLs, which, which they need to. But cholesterol is made up in every cell membrane of our body. Cholesterol helps form bile so we can digest those fats in the small intestine. Cholesterol is part of the brain. Cholesterol, uh, it, it makes hormones. Cholesterol is what helps the sun rays convert uh, the, the into vitamin D. Cholesterol is so important. Yes, we know that the small dense LDL particles are generally the ones that are the bad ones that actually build up plaque in the intima of our arteries. And we need those HDLs. Those HDLs is what actually searches for those LDLs in the arteries, brings them back to the liver so they can be excreted from our body. So HDLs are extremely important. But I want you to understand that our liver produces 80% of our cholesterol. We only get 20% from dietary cholesterol from the foods that we eat. But the big problem here is excessive sugars. Too much sugar gets converted to fat. That develops a whole condition of diabetes, prediabetes, insulin resistance, uh, the problems with hydrogenated oils, your fried foods, your fast foods, your partially hydro hydrogenated oils, uh, those types of coffee creamers that you may be using are all extremely bad. They can increase the bad cholesterol, those LDLs. So I'm going to share this research article from the Journal of Nutrition, which is Vitamin E and Atherosclerosis, Beyond Prevention of LDL Oxidation. But that's the key. It's the oxidation, the bad cholesterol that's been oxidized. This is what triggers inflammation. This leads to the formation of plaque in the arteries that we call atherosclerosis, hardening of those arteries, placking of the arteries, blocking off blood supply to the heart, we call a heart attack, to the brain that we call a stroke. This is what it's all about. And it's vitamin E, in addition to being carried in an LDL particle and protecting it from oxidative modification. 
as well as other components of the vascular system, including endothelial cells, smooth muscle cells, platelets, and immune cells, that has been shown to modulate a variety of inflammatory processes that are involved in atherogenesis. And vitamin E suppresses the expression of adhesion molecules on the endothelial cells and reduces their adhesive interactions, which is an important early event in initiation of fatty streak formation and atherogenesis. And vitamin E also increases nitric oxide in the endothelium. Nitric oxide expands the arteries. It opens it wider so more blood supply can get to where it needs to go. If it's your heart, your brain, or any other tissue in your body. And vitamin E is commonly found in wheat germ oils, sunflower seeds, almonds, hazelnuts, pine nuts, peanuts, salmon, avocado, rainbow trout, red sweet pepper, Brazil nuts, mangoes, turnip greens, kiwi fruit, butternut squash, broccoli, olive oil, as well as crab, crayfish, shrimp, and lobster. Now the recommended minimum amount of vitamin E is extremely low. It's 15 milligrams or 22.4 IUs. And most of the vitamins and nutrients that you'll come across, it's usually around 400 IUs. They say you should not go over 800 IUs a day, depending upon your condition, if you have diabetes, how advanced your heart disease is. I always advise, speak to your doctor to make sure you're doing the right thing. So vitamin E inhibits smooth muscle cell proliferation and platelet aggregation, not allowing the platelets to build up to prevent that atherosclerotic placking that potentially could be blocking off oxygen to the heart or another part of our bodies. I hope this video serves you well. Please look at the researched article below. It's very interesting. It has a lot of power when it comes to good health and preventing atherosclerosis as well as helping atherosclerosis. Um, the key thing here is watch your diet. Stay away from the processed refined foods, those fried foods, those trans fats. Exercise. If you're getting that visceral fat, that potentially can lead to many other conditions of metabolic syndrome, high blood pressure, insulin resistance, and the list goes on. So take care of your health because it will take care of you. Leave your comments below. And most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel.